Proudly We Hail was a public service show for the Army and Air Force that first aired for a period of four months in 1941 on CBS. The show returned to the airways from 1946 through 1957 and aired on as many as 1,300 radio stations. The 1941 shows were billed as a program designed to strengthen the mainstream of the defense machine, the workers in the arsenal of democracy, during a time of unlimited national emergency. This was a time of the buildup of tensions in the Far East, just prior to the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Major Bowes and Jane Froman kicked off the first 30-minute show on the CBS network on June 8, 1941, and the show ran during the summer until September 21st, mostly on Friday nights, with different hosts and participants. Unfortunately, none of these original shows are in circulation or known to exist. In 1946, Hollywood producer C.P. McGregor put together a series that was to be used as a public service in support of the Army and Air Corps recruitment departments. He had a lot of contacts in the radio industry, but did not have direct access to the networks. As a result, he targeted independent stations, and by the week of July 10, 1946, had assembled over 350 stations into his independent network for the first broadcast of the syndicated show. There were 136 shows in the first series. The shows were initially 15 minutes long and included recruitment ads along with a short play featuring a big-name Hollywood star. Later shows in the series finished with a short interview with that star. McGregor pulled off a major coup when he recruited Clark Gable for the first show. Other major actors agreeing to participate were Robert Mitchum, Glenn Ford, Alan Ladd, Preston Foster, Vincent Price, Barry Sullivan, Harold Perry, William Holden, Edward G. Robinson, and many others. McGregor was born in 1897 and would pass away in 1968. While active, he was known as the DeMille of the Discs, He produced and distributed many syndicated shows such as Cecil and Sally, The Shadow, The La Rosa Hollywood Theater of Stars, Salute to Reservists, Obsession, Heartbeat Theater, Skippy Hollywood Theater, Lux Radio Theater, Ebb and Zeb, and many more. He also produced hundreds of recording sessions with artists such as Charlie Parker, Stan Keaton, Peggy Lee, Lead Belly, and many more jazz and contemporary artists. The Library of Congress has possession of the McGregor Collection Masters and Recording Ledgers from 1931 to 1970. A Google search of C.P. McGregor will give additional details about his remarkable involvements in radio transcriptions. Now back to the show. Not all stations in the network would broadcast the show on the same date. Newspaper references indicated that a particular program would be broadcast at different locations on dates that were months apart. For ease of reference, however, we have used the date of the release as part of the file name. The first 78 shows were of the 15-minute variety, but starting with show 79, the program would be 30 minutes long, still following the same format of a recruitment announcement, the first half of a play featuring a big-name actor, a longer recruitment announcement, the second half of the play, another brief recruiting announcement, and finally, by an interview. The first of the 30-minute shows featured Esther Williams and was released the week of January 11, 1948. The program must have enjoyed quite a wide audience. Newspaper clippings, as well as announcements during the program, indicated by early 1948 the independent network had grown to over 1,000 stations, and by mid-1948, the program was heard over 1,300 stations. C.P. McGregor served as host, and Wendell Niles as announcer for the second series of 103 shows called Series G. These shows followed the same format as the original series and were also released one show per week. The second series episode numbering is confusing because the first label printed with Series G begins with episode number 20, and is dated February 20th, 1949. Disc inscriptions, that is to say the etchings cut into the disc itself, indicate that Series G extends back to October 10th, 1948, which is titled Susie of the Sawdust, which is episode 118. Unfortunately, 
we are missing the 14 transcription discs between episode 110 and 125. And until these etchings on these discs can be examined, our assumptions to date and numbering remain to be confirmed and are subject to correction. Up through Series G, the Proudly We Hail program has always been a radio log compiler's nightmare. Many broadcast dates and episode numbering have been added to this collection. Corrections and additions to previous radio logs are now possible, and the old-time radio researchers database, known as Otter, now has reasonably accurate results. If all of this episode numbering is a confusing mess to follow, a clear idea can be gleaned by referring to the program spreadsheet found on CD number one. The file is named Titles, Sources, Artists, dot xlsx in the anthology slash episode details subdirectory. Now, the last show of Series G hosted by McGregor with Wendell Niles as announcer is dated September 24, 1950, and titled Back Home. This is episode number 103. The program continued with episode number 104, but it was no longer labeled as Series G. Lee Tracy took over the hosting duties for shows 104 through 147. Then Paul Lucas served as host for shows 148 through 155 and followed by Conrad Nagel for shows 156 through 173. Kenneth Bangert served as announcer for shows 104 through 173. Then starting with episode 174, Kenneth Bangert would solo as host and announcer for the series through number 284. By episode 200 or so, no movie stars or famous names appeared in the shows. The series continued through episode 464, which was released in August of 1957. There are still many missing episodes, and your help in filling in these gaps is requested. Please contact Mike Heron or David Oxford of the Old Time Radio Researchers Group if you can add a recording. If you have a reel-to-reel, cassette, or transcription disc and need help digitizing these recordings, please allow us to do this for you. Transcription discs and their etchings would be particularly helpful to confirm titles and dates. We believe you'll find this series quite interesting, well-recorded, and very well-performed. For old-time radio researchers, I'm your announcer, Patrick Andre. Enjoy the show.